We in the West are currently facing a crisis that threatens to undo everything we hold up in value, especially those of us who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ. But sadly, few of us are aware of it, and those that are seem unable or unwilling to do anything about it. The Bible says, the prudent man sees danger ahead and takes refuge, while the fool ignores it and suffers for it. Proverbs chapter 22, verse three. My purpose in creating this YouTube video is to raise the level of awareness of the dangers that we're facing in the church and what I believe the Lord is calling us to do about it. In my opinion, one of the reasons why we have had such a negligible impact on the surrounding culture is because we lack a bigger picture understanding of our faith and how it's meant to be expressed. Because of that, we have operated in a diminished capacity, one in which the surrounding culture has influenced the church instead of the other way around. I believe we have a biblical mandate to have a broader understanding of our faith, one that takes into account current events as they fit into the broader biblical prophetic meta narrative. Jesus underscores this reality in Luke chapter 12, where he admonished the crowds. When you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say, it's going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say, it's going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? When considering this passage in context, Jesus is clear about a couple of things. Number one, this admonition is delivered within the broader scope of being watchful. When one reads the prior verses of chapter 12, beginning in verse 35, Jesus tells a parable, one in which the primary message being communicated is that of being dressed and ready for service because the hour of his return is unknown. Therefore, being watchful and alert is a necessary imperative. Number two, it seems evident that Jesus is scolding them for their lack of understanding of present events and the implication of how it should govern their behavior accordingly. The church would do well to take note of this. But not only do I believe Jesus Christ, our authoritative model, to be calling us to be aware of events as they unfold around us, I also believe that God the Father will hold us accountable for our failure to warn our brothers and sisters in Christ about the imminent dangers that threaten our faith. Consider this passage out of Acts chapter 20 as an example. In this passage, the Apostle Paul is bidding farewell to the elders at the church in Ephesus. And he writes in verse 26 of chapter 20, Therefore, I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. For I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. This seems to be an almost cryptic warning from the Apostle Paul. So let's break it down and examine some of the elements. The first thing Paul mentions is, quote, being innocent of the blood of all men, unquote, in verse 26. What could he possibly be referring to? As it turns out, this is a direct reference to Ezekiel chapter 33, verses one through nine. And in this passage, God warns the watchman on the wall that he will hold the watchman accountable if he fails to warn his fellow Israelites of impending danger. Furthermore, their blood will be on his hands, Ezekiel chapter 33, verse six. But if he's faithful to warn his brothers and they fail to heed the warning, the watchman will then be cleared of any responsibility. This should point out the seriousness of the emphasis that God places on warning fellow believers of the existential threats 
to the people of God. Next, the Apostle Paul points out that he has, quote, proclaimed the whole will of God, unquote, verse 27. This is in reference to the fact that, as Christians, we're called to embrace the full counsel of God's requirements for his people, which should compel us to recognize that not only are we dearly loved by God, but that we are also called to a life of obedience to him. And as such, our obedience should be expressed within the context of current events and their relation to the biblical prophetic narrative. Finally, Paul encourages the elders to watch over themselves and the flock God has given them charge of, because after he, Paul, leaves, quote, savage wolves will come in and distort the truth. I believe that this could possibly be a reference to the situation that, in my opinion, exists in the church today, one in which the full commandments of God have been ignored and instead a one-dimensional and underdeveloped message has been imparted and embraced. The net result of this is a church that has not operated at optimal level, certainly not one that is functioning as salt and light. Instead, because of a lack of awareness of cultural trends and appetites, coupled with a watered-down message from its pulpits, the church has failed to confront the pressing issues of our day. It's time for the church to wake up, time to shake itself from its spiritual lethargy, time to be willing to move beyond being intentionally oblivious to the events that it's confronted with. Again, heeding the words of the Apostle Paul, who says in Romans chapter 13, verse 11, and do this, understanding the present time, the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. I couldn't agree more with the Apostle Paul. In summary, we need to be men of courage, men of action. We need to be like the men of Issachar who understood the times and knew what Israel should do.